Hello everyone, my name is Vincent Thieu and I've been told that I know a few things about television. Today, I want to give you a quick status update on HDMI 2.1. Now, I know some of you have been waiting to buy a television, but you want to wait maybe until CS 2019, when true HDMI 2.1 televisions are announced. Well, here's the bombshell. I don't think there will be any true HDMI 2.1 TVs unveiled or launched at CES 2019, and here are the reasons. First, let me clarify about what I mean about true HDMI 2.1. True HDMI 2.1 televisions are those that will have true HDMI 2.1 chipsets that are capable of a higher bandwidth of 48 gigabits per second. And the thing is, this true HDMI 2.1 chipset with a higher bandwidth of 48 gigabits per second is not actually even available on the open market yet. A few days ago, I read a press release by this company called Socionex, who actually announced that they have designed the first true HDMI 2.1 silicon or image processor, and it will only be shipped out to manufacturers to be implemented into their products in March 2019. So in terms of the timeline, that means that it will be much later before TVs, before receivers, before any other consumer electronic products will actually feature a true HDMI 2.1 chipset that is capable of 48 gigabits per second. Another piece of news that I read recently is a press release by another company called Synopsys who announced that LG Electronics have selected them to supply a true HDMI 2.1 silicon or chipset to LG for their future products. Now, this press release was issued on the 18th of September, and from my knowledge of the product development cycle of various TV manufacturers, including LG Electronics, I know that if a product or television is to be unveiled at CES, it would have been in development much earlier maybe in the summer of 2018, they would have a reasonably final prototype to be beta tested. So the timeline doesn't coincide with a true HDMI 2.1 LG TV launch at CES 2019. It's just not possible because the physical chipset, the silicon, the SOC or system on chip is just not ready yet. It's only going to be ready by March 2019. And therefore, that is the reason I think there will be no true HDMI 2.1 TVs to be announced or launched at CES. Maybe later on in 2019, maybe in the second half or at EFA 2019, there will be true HDMI 2.1 televisions, but at CES 2019, I don't think there will be any true HDMI 2.1 televisions. Now, some of you will ask me, what about the Xbox One X? Now, here is the thing that I need to again clarify. True HDMI 2.1 requires a dedicated silicon or system or chip or SOC that is capable of 48 gigabits per second. Now, the HDMI forum, which is the organization responsible for HDMI licensing, has been flexible enough to allow certain manufacturers to call their products HDMI 2.1 if they actually include some features of HDMI 2.1 even though the chipset itself is only 18 gigabits per second, which is HDMI 2.0b. So let's say the Sony Master Series television, the AF9 or A9F, the ZF9 or Z9F, they actually have this feature called Enhanced ARC or ERRC, which is actually a feature under HDMI 2.1, but Sony has managed to implement it on the Bravia Master Series so that owners can enjoy lossless audio, let's say Dolby Atmos or DTS-X through the audio return channel or ARC route. So in that sense, HDMI Forum is saying that that TV can also be called HDMI 2.1, but you have to qualify the statement by saying that it supports HDMI 2.1 EARC. And if I give you another example, the Samsung 2018 QLED televisions, they support ALLM or Auto Low Latency Mode. This allows owners to automatically switch 
the TV into game mode whenever you are playing a game and then switch our game mode back into let's say the most accurate movie mode when you exit a game and start watching movies. So that is ALLM and the 2018 Samsung QLX support that. They also support VRR or variable refresh rate and the Xbox One X certainly is capable of delivering free sync in conjunction with the 2018 Samsung QLEDs. So from that point of view, the Samsung QLEDs probably can be advertised as HDMI 2.1 VRR or HDMI 2.1 ALLM. But I think this practice is probably going to be slightly confusing and may prompt some manufacturers to try and mislead some potential buyers out there. I don't think it is fair. I think uh, when you say something is HDMI 2.1, it should only be reserved for a TV or a product with true HDMI 2.1 chipset that is capable of the higher bandwidth of 48 gigabits per second and therefore allowing for 8K or even 10K resolutions at higher frame rates. I think if you start qualifying statements like, you know, this TV supports HDMI 2.1, but only certain features of HDMI 2.1. It's like me, you know, going around telling everyone that I'm the world's best footballer, but only in my house. But that's the situation that we find ourselves in HDMI Forum, the licensing body for the HDMI standard has come out and said that products can be advertised as HDMI 2.1 as long as you qualify it. So in my opinion, there is not going to be any true HDMI 2.1 television to be unveiled or announced at CES 2019. But I don't think you should wait until true HDMI 2.1 arrives for a couple of reasons. First, many of the useful features of HDMI 2.1, such as dynamic metadata, such as EARC, such as variable refresh rate or VRR, such as auto low latency mode or ALLM, they can actually be implemented on existing HDMI 2.0b chipsets because these features do not require too high a bandwidth. So let's say I already mentioned earlier the Sony Master Series, they already support ERRC. The Samsung 2018 QLED, they already support VRR and ALM. And I think going into 2019, more and more TVs will be supporting these features, dynamic metadata, ALM, VRR, ERRC, that can be implemented on existing 2.0B chipsets. And realistically, you only need HDMI 2.1 for let's say 8K at higher frame rate. And we all know that there is currently not really that many source that is capable of outputting 8K resolution, there's not going to be an 8K Blu-ray display anytime soon. Even the latest NVIDIA graphics card in the current cycle, the RTX 2080, they don't support HDMI 2.1. And if you want to watch 8K, the easiest way is probably through YouTube streaming or Vimeo streaming. And these do not require the HDMI ports because you can watch them through the internal app as long as you have the necessary codec on the television. So I don't think it is necessary to wait for true HDMI 2.1 before buying your next television because when the HDMI forum announced the standard, they are looking really, really far away for when, let's say, 8K resolution or 10K resolution at higher frame rate. By higher frame rate, I mean at least 60 hertz or even 120 hertz. They become more commonplace. So they are looking really far ahead in the future. But some of the more useful features of HDMI 2.1, VR, dynamic metadata, the ALLM, and also ERC, they can already be backported on existing HDMI 2.0b chipset. And another thing is that if you want to reap the full benefits of HDMI 2.1, everything in your video chain needs to be through HDMI 2.1. Let's say from your source player to your receiver to your display or television. And for all this to happen, I think we're probably looking at year 2020 or year 2021 before all these will come into fruition. So my personal advice is that, you know, don't be too worried about HDMI 2.1. Of course, you will say that, you know, if I want to buy a television anyway, I might as well wait until 2020 or 2021. Yes, uh, of course, that is your choice. But there's always going to be something better around the corner. When you wait until 2020 or 2021, 
then there will probably be HDMI 2.2, HDMI 2.3. It never ends. So don't be put off by the fact that a TV doesn't have true HDMI 2.1. I mean, let's say at this upcoming Black Friday, if you see a 2018 television that has an attractive price, just go for it because to reap the full benefits of HDMI 2.1, your whole video chain needs to be upgraded from your source player to your receiver and then to your display or television. And realistically, these products are only going to be commonplace around year 2020 or even year 2021. Right, I think that sums up this video and Look, right? <laughs> it's 10 minutes. So this is quite a short video. So we actually have time to chill, hang out and maybe chit chat about some random stuff. Um, how's the weather in your place, right? Here in Manchester, it's quite sunny today, but the weather has certainly taken a turn for the colder. These days when I go out, I have to actually put on a jumper. Otherwise my nipples, which are hard enough to cut a diamond would be showing through my shirt. And did you see Mourinho's antics over the weekend? I don't really blame him though, to be fair, he was actually provoked. And if someone comes up to me and say that a manufacturer sponsored shootout, even though it is blinded and just so happens to have the manufacturer winning the shootout, is more credible than an independent shootout like our shootout, then I may react in the same manner as Mourinho. And I was doing some research on another shootout that is put on by a manufacturer and I came across this post on AVS forum that outlines why you shouldn't trust a manufacturer sponsored shootout even though it is blinded. And whoever who has written this post, right, I salute you, I really want to buy you a beer. But the key reason is that, you know, when a manufacturer sponsors a shootout, they already know the format that the shootout would take. It's like going to an exam where you actually get to set the question based on the knowledge that you actually physically have. Or let's say if I go into an interview and I get to set the questions that the interviewers ask me based on my strengths. So the interviewer might ask me, Vincent, so can you tell me how happy your customers are about your calibration? So I think an unbiased shootout can only be done independently without any input or meddling by a TV brand who just so happens to sponsor the shootout. Right, I think uh, I have to go out and grab lunch, you know, and I've got to do some groceries, some errands to run and things like that. So on that note, I'll end this video. If you found this video useful, please click the like button and subscribe to the HGTV Test YouTube channel for more videos like this. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.